welcome to the Trapping 101 workshop. You've already filled out uh, your name tag, and I'm it's so excited that people who I don't know have showed up. Three of you, I don't know, I don't know you two, and I'm so happy. And I hope after we have a break, you can all uh, meet each other and, and share information, and maybe the important thing is that we help each other because trapping is a hard job when you're just doing it yourself. Um, that is the one thing. The gap, as I said there, gets smaller as all you cat people come out of the shadows. When I started, way back when, when I first moved here, um, there was some little pockets of cats here and there, and some people were feeding, but they were so afraid to come out of that the, the shadows because they had the fear of God with animal control. Animal control is going to give them a citation. Animal control was going to take their cats away and euthanize them. So even if I left a note for the theater and said, hey, you know, this bossy New Yorker is sitting here writing a note saying, call me. I never got a call because people were like, who are you, you know? So um, eventually I met other people and they started feeding that colony and it, you know, they learned, you met, learned how to trap, and she started, she's got a managed colony there. So, um, like I said, fear stopped a lot of people from reaching out for help, um, but the cavalry has arrived. We're all here to help each other, and so you don't have to hide anymore, and if you know people that are out there hiding in the shadows, please tell them to come on out, because they need to learn things, and um, we've got your back. But I like that we can all talk and that we can start a dialogue about this. It's not something anymore that people can ignore. It's out behind Walmarts, it's behind all the restaurants, Jonathan's, and behind Hot Shots, and everywhere you go, there's cats. And there's the important thing is they don't belong in a shelter, they don't belong in a pound because they're never going to get a home. And they need to be fixed, put back out where they're feeling comfortable. And then we're going to talk a little bit more about shelters and the way to feed and stuff like that. I, I kind of get off my plan sometimes when I talk. So, does everybody here know what trap and neuter return is? Or are we still learning? We all know what that means. I don't want to. Does everybody know what an ear tip cat is? Okay. So, um, okay. So, how many of us here still? Need to learn, need to trap, have not trapped yet by hands. One. We trapped one. We okay. trapped. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so some of this is going to be totally new to you, and for the others, it'll be um, a little bit of a refresher. So I don't have to go into a lot of detail about what trapping the return is because we know what it is. Okay. But when we're talking to other people, it's important to know the advantages. Uh, nothing else works. And uh, what it's using is volunteers like yourself. It uses volunteer manpower. This is a, a typical clinic day for trapping, a, a mass trapping situation, which it's done. And I think these traps even look like the ones we have. Um, obviously, if uh, the counties and the municipalities don't have to do this by themselves. It's less costly because uh, we, as volunteers, are taking it over. Um, in last year, uh, in 2015, we had a grant, a $40,000 grant, um, and we uh, got about 1,000 cats fixed and vaccinated. And some of them were friendly, some of them were not. They were re-released to the colony. That's what it's all about. Um, and long-term monitoring is done by the people who are doing the feeding and doing the trapping. And of course, it's humane. It is not humane to trap and kill, in my estimate, and I think everybody here would agree. Um, if all the cats are fixed, no more litters will be born. Uh, the size of the colony will start to shrink as a matter of, it just makes sense. The more animals you fix, the less animals will be born. There won't be the hunger, there won't be the illness that happens with kittens that are born sickly. And um, the other thing is the yowling and the fighting, that will go away. 
because there's no testosterone pumped up in the males. So they won't have a reason to go looking for their mates, happy the females, yowling. The females are yowling because they're in heat. Odors, that's another advantage. You won't have the odors of um, that pungent. If you've ever smelled male cat, it's quite <laughs> pungent. And when we start talking about actually trapping, trapping, um, we'll talk a lot about protecting your vehicle and protecting your floors when you're overnighting a cat. Okay. So, um, the long-term monitoring, that's when the colony caretakers, uh, they love their cats. They're going to be dedicated to those cats. They're going to be watching out if a new cat shows up. That's another free way to the uh, to municipality of not having more cats born because as soon as they see the, a new cat show up, they will trap it and get it fixed. Okay, so trap and remove fails. Does anybody know why? Anybody want to talk about it? Because they'll be moved back into the territory. That's, yeah. the, that's the vacuum effect, is that the other cats will be moving into the territory where animal control has come out. And that's the mystery of why animal control they haven't put it together yet. When they keep going back to the same spot, why are there more cats here at Walmart? Why are there more cats here at the restaurant? Well, because you did your trapping of what you thought you got everyone, and then you left, and the little guys hanging out in the corner who were too smart to be trapped come out and they start to reproduce again. And so then you've got the added problem of people who are moving, or they feel like, well, this is a colony, I'm going to drop this cat here, and they'll get fed. So it's kind of a scary thing to let others know that you're doing this, but it's, it's almost necessary that you have to in order to get everybody on board. Um, so we talked about animal control missing some of the cats, and there's that ongoing abandonment, and no, no one's monitoring it. So in reality, it'll never stop unless we get this under control with spays and neuters. All right. Um, this is pretty self-explanatory, too. Um, when you've got everyone in a colony fixed, and actually I have, I don't know if any of you know Dorothy, um, Die, Dorothy Die. Thank you. I forgot her last name for a minute. She has taken over, at one point, seven colonies. And she said, I asked her to write something up to explain why colonies do eventually die out. That by natural attrition, if you've fixed everyone, some of the cats are going to age out, they're going to pass away, some of them are going to be friendly, so you'll be able to adopt them out, some of them will be kittens you can socialize. So chopping away at that colony, eventually um, the colonies die out or disappear. Okay, so she says that she took care of seven colonies for two people. And in 2005, she stumbled upon a colony of 24 cats. They would trap four at a time and get them fixed at one of the clinics that were available then. A few months later, three friendly cats were dumped, which is another thing that happens. And um, due to safety issues to them, themselves and the cats, they, they retrapped everyone and rehomed everyone. And I don't know where they went, but that was the one colony. But um, by 2015, she goes through all these different colonies, um, from seven colonies, they were down to one. One colony of four cats. I mean, that's amazing. But it's not going to happen unless you really keep going at it and keep going back. And you, you have, and we talked about this a lot with, um, there were certain situations that Janice got involved with that she knows the most important thing to do is the colony you start you must finish. If you're working with one cat, two cats, you've got to finish off with their kittens, get them fixed. Um, traditionally, animal rescues and shelters no longer give kittens out to adopt without first fixing them because they know what happens. People might mean well, but this one moves, this one gives it away to somebody else, and that one doesn't think it's real important. Then suddenly that cat's going into heat. That cat gets kicked out, mates with someone, and here we go again. The whole cycle. Um, maybe, can everybody see if I do it on the floor? Or do I need to have it raised up? Is there a chair? Chair. Yeah. <laughs> we're, what we're gonna 
what I'm planning to do is that have um, two groups of you, because I brought in a single, thank you, a single door trap and a double door trap. <laughs> and what I'm thinking of doing is having Sarah and Janice divide you guys up into um, two groups so that you can see the difference and, and play with it. And me, I have started with single door traps back in the 90s. They're not my favorite. They shut really hard. They scare the heck out of the cats. Um, they're small. They're confined. If you have to, and you always overnight a cat in the trap. And we'll talk about that too. I call these my Cadillacs of traps because they're double door. And what you want to do the first time, say you have a double door trap, and it's not much more expensive than a single door, uh, as it turns out. I get these online. And you can line it with newspaper. You have to line it with newspaper because you don't want the cats touching their feet going through the grating. And you put it, you put enough paper that it's got some padding, but not enough paper that <coughs> the um, thank you mm -hmm. that when you set the trap and you put the food, I'll show you without covering it, so it makes more sense. This is the plate. The cat walks over the plate on the double door. We put this back.
sometimes the cats are very, very smart, as we know, we've been doing this for a while. I have seen mice go in, not set the traps off, eat the food, leave, and you're like, what? There's no food on the plate, and the trap door's still up. Sometimes the traps don't set because they've been, um, they need to be maybe WD 40 or something like that. So, that's this one. And you're also the breadcrumb frame thing, but you're not going to put too, too much food in the front. I've done that too. I've done everything wrong that you can think of. <laughs> so then they're like, mm, yum, yum, I'm going with them now. <laughs> I've eaten enough. So you want them to go all the way in the back. I've seen cats paw at the plate in the back, going, yeah, you go ahead. I'm going to get this one right here. Um, I've seen two cats go in one trap. That could be dicey. Um, we'll talk a little bit about that as well. If you get two cats in a trap, don't freak out like I used to. Just keep them covered and then bring a separate trap to the clinic where you're going to and they will, they have this handy dandy thing. I call it an acrocomb, but it's actually called, what does Sarah Stein call it? What is it? Squisher. A squisher. She calls it the squisher? Yeah. It's, it's, the formal name is trap divider, but you know, between squisher and acrocomb, what happens is you get the two cats in, one gets squished. Actually, you should do it this way, and Janice and I were talking about this yesterday, because if you really want to do it super duper safe, you get two. You put one this away, through, and you have to figure this out before you go out there and start messing around with it. You want to practice. See how far you can get it to go through. And then you put another one the vertical way. So it's double, it's a double thing. So I at, at the beginning stage, you don't want to be separating anybody. You know, but you also, very, very important, you don't want to leave your trap unattended. Please, there's so many reasons why you shouldn't leave your trap unattended. Some people say, well, <clears throat> I have to go to work. Or I have to do something to go to the store. By the time you come back, anything could happen. You know, you could have gotten an animal you didn't want in there. You could have had maybe two, maybe a kitten, maybe this thing came down, caught somebody's tail. You want to be there so you can lift it up and that tail will go in. Not to let the cat out. You don't want to do that. But I've had an experience at Hot Shots where we did like a mass trapping and it was raining and I was like, oh, let me let me take them to my house. And the gal there said, no, they'll be fine under this awning thing. Well, there was one cat that was crying and she says, oh, he's just a big mouth. And I was like, yeah, okay. I believed her, it was her cat. The next day I get there, the cat's still crying. There is a flood down the center of where these cats were trapped they're sitting in water, basically. Like I said, I've done everything wrong. If your gut tells you something, listen to your gut, okay? Um, there's a time to be nice, and there's a time to be strong, okay? Your gut knows. So, I took the cats to Cece, and what I found out was the one that was howling, its tail was in there, under the door, the entire night until they got to um, get it fixed. So, I think a piece came off, antibiotics, the whole nine yards, and now you've got a feral cat. You're not going to be able to, you know, medicate it every day. So you want to be careful. At the same time, I don't want to scare the Jesus out of you because that's an unusual situation. Once you, make believe this is open, okay? Once you have your food dribbled in, your food in the back, this is tightly shut, everything's good, you want to cover the sheet. Does anybody here know why we cover even before, let me back up, before that cat goes in, you want to cover it up. Does anybody know why or have an idea why? Yeah? Cats like to go in holes. That's Basically. one reason. How about a second reason? To the use of it. No, one more reason. You can think of it. Well, cats like to go into holes, right? When
when you, have you ever trapped a cat and come over to it from a distance and go, oh, I got a cat. What is a cat doing in here while you're coming towards it? It's freaking out. It's hitting its head from here to here because they see out, but they don't know how to get out. However, if they're covered up, and again, everything wrong that I have done, I remember calling my vet up in New York going, the cat's face is all bloody. He's like, it just smacked it on the door. It's fine. Cover it. Cover it? Yes. Okay. Lesson learned. So once you cover it, the, the, the sheet will even, the way you do it, it will even cover the front. So if it can't see, it doesn't really know it's trapped. It's kind of in that comfy little cave, right? And that's what you want to do. You want to make sure that it thinks it's comfortable. So, after you, Question. I think, yes. Just, just to uh, let them know, uh, we put a hole in the middle of the sheet so your handle oh, pops yeah. through. And, I mean, these are just old sheets, old towels. Thank you. Cut up, and just so you can get it over the cage. Doesn't matter what, you know, what, what size you use it, but yeah. it's really and helpful and to carry. carry it in. I was fine with it. You know, I thought, everything's fine. The cat's sitting in the car. It's quiet. It didn't even smell at that point. Put it right over here. So then anything it peed or pooped, it would go through the newspaper, go onto the tarp, good to go. If I have to get rid of it, it was only a buck. However, what I didn't know was that the cat came back and urinated, spray, because it's still a male, spraying the side of the sheet. The spray dripped down onto the tarp, which is what we wanted it to do, but then it rolled in between the seats. <laughs> I cannot tell you how long it took to get that smell out of my nice new two-year-old car. Anyway, so you want to be careful and you want to make sure you've got tarp or plastic or garbage bags, contractor bags, or old shower curtains on the back of your seat, your car, and on the front, on where the cat is. So you don't have to go spending money. You can I have whatever. a pickup truck with a camera shell on it. That works too. <laughs> what you never want to do, ever, is put the cat in your pickup. You don't want to do that. that no, is I mean with a shell. With a camper shell. That's different. That's different. But um, an I, open pickup probably would freak them out. We're all clear on that. I learned something today because I did not think of the point about how when was the last time that mother cat fed that kitten. Mm -hmm. So now I have to look at this totally different myself. Okay. If you're going to be trapping in a development where there's other people, um, we were very fortunate. Here, near where Janice lives, there was, I, I had a call out for help because there was a gentleman who uh, was on hospice care and his wife was uh, pretty well into stages of uh, Alzheimer's mm -hmm. and they got cit citations for having 18 cats outside. That's what they told. 18 with no rabies. 18 with no rabies. Well, mm -hmm. um, I lived pretty far from that area and I can't physically lift anymore. So I put a call out, and thank God Janice said, I'll do it, I'll help. And she wound up uh, trapping and releasing back there what well, started with 25 cats. Some of them went to Judy's, her situation, and some of them have you know, migrated elsewhere. There is a core group that's still there that Janice is feeding, and I think you have some help now, right? Mm -hmm. Until that home is sold or goes into bankruptcy or whatever it does. What we did was we put a flyer together telling people that Janice was going to be out in the neighborhood, also asking for help, right, for other feeders, was it in that letter? Yes. And asking for allies, basically. And she was, she had a lot of success with the development. At first, everybody said, yeah, I'll help, and then they kind of fell away, which is a typical thing, you know, it's like, let somebody else do it. Um, but you can always put a flyer together if, if you're in a situation like that. Um, I don't think anybody has a situation like that here in this room right now. 
Um, I'm hearing that you have your little your businesses where you have to trap, and on your property where you have to trap. Is there another situation that we're not covering? I have door those door hangles too that we can get more farm from. Mm -hmm. Alley had allies, but it, it says you know hey we're actively trapped in a group. I wrote to the band and I don't think I brought them in. I think you, you did it. Okay. I don't know. I don't those think, are great. I don't think I did. Um, but it, it either way, just as long as they know that you're actively trapping, because some people do have indoor outdoor cats that have already been fixed. Um, what I did was ask who who was he do have what I actually took pictures of cats, so that if they did end up on my trap that I knew that, you know, I could take that trap then to that person's house and say, is this your personal cat? If it wasn't, it went to the vet. If they weren't sure, it went to the vet. Um, but, you know, other, but it helped eliminate who had been done, who hadn't been done, whatever. The, most of the people were good about keeping the cats, the indoor out, outdoor cats inside while I was traveling <coughs> so they didn't get their cats. <coughs> And, and, and you do get some that because people dropped off and you don't know the history on them and they're not ear chipped and I get them to the vet and then they, I go pick them up and they say well, that one was already neutered, that one was already spayed, mm -hmm. but you don't know until the vet can look at them and tell. And at that point they need to be ear chipped. They, they do, they always trap, ear tap. If they, go in a ear, if they go in a trap, even if they're friendly, they will come out with an ear tip. Too bad, that's the way it goes. You had a question? Yeah. For this comment that you were working on with the senior citizens, Mm -hmm. Was that colony then relocated, or what how, what, how was it resolved? The majority of the, of the uh, <coughs> how many did we bring out to your place, Judy? Five? <laughs> um, there were other feeders in that neighborhood, and so they were alerted when I started trapping there that this man was hospice. When something happened, these cats were probably going to migrate to their feeding areas. So I have seven cats that are still there that I feed out of the 25 that was there. I have seven cats there that, that is the core group that still shows up. The other have migrated to the other neighbors that are feeding, and they were okay with that because they were already feeding outdoor cats anyway. So, All right, but when the property sold? When the property yeah. sold, they're actually moving it, oh. moving to my son's farm still. That's, yeah, we're still that's moving, still moving. Oh, I'm um, um, Yeah, I'm going to, I'm gonna, you know, that personal colony, because I've been taking care of them since, what, July when he passed away? Yeah. Um, Several of those kitties, after being spayed and neutered, beautiful little Siamese's, but they, they have become friendlier. So, um, my goal is to transfer them over to my son's farm. Which is so another whole workshop. Which is another whole oh, yeah, workshop. Yeah, because I'm going to have to retrap the ones that have already been trapped. Yeah, yeah. well, yeah, not only that, but retrapping the ones that have already been trapped before, because they know what a trap is now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, um, okay, any more questions about that? No, I'll need to connect with you to get more information about the well, And some of those kittens um, were up to Bedford Humane Society. Dr. Hudson took the baby. Yeah, so. yeah. That, that was one of those great things that, that it was three mama cats. One of them's going to be in uh, News Daily Advance next week. He's oh, still with us. yes! He's perfect, but he's still with us. And Fluffy's still at my house, which oh, was the okay. indoor cat that they had. And Bedford Humane Society took the Siamese they had and got it adopted out. That is great. Um, yeah, all working together and got the job done. Let, let me just, mm -hmm. let me just uh, say something really important before we go further. <laughs> this is really, really important to know. We do not relocate cats unless it's absolutely necessary. It's not a good thing because then for so many reasons, you know, the animal has its space there and if there's a feeder there and all like that. Not only that, you have the issue of the vacuum effect where you're removing the cats and more will come in. So unless it's it's an emergency situation, there's no one to do the feeding, they're in danger, someone's using them as target practice, animal control says I'm going to take them if you don't, you know, then but then the work starts and yes, that is another workshop. Come to the one in Charlottesville when we talk about foreign cat programs and you might get some information there. Remember, if you can, start out thinking, I'm going to trap in the morning of the day that cat goes into the clinic or the night before. If you can, do not trap on a Friday night or a Saturday anytime because that cat will be in the trap longer and longer. It's not real great. It's not going to kill them, but it's not the best situation. Not best for them. Okay. Um, the day before trapping, 
I know we were kind of all over the map with all this stuff, but you want to withhold food. Um, sometimes we get really nervous the cat's going to, don't you have to leave? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, you know, anything that we're covering today will be on the website, on the Barn Cat Buddies website. So please go on there, tool around, print anything off that you need, and if you need, you have a card, uh, take her card, and if you have any more questions or you need some a little bit more hand-holding, we'll call on <laughs> right, thank you so well, much. Well, I'd like to uh, say if there's, any, if, if there's anything going on in the, in the Goodview Chambersburg area, that's where we live. I'm trapping in Goodview right now. Whereabouts? I mean, what part? Well, maybe what you down. guys can do is exchange information. Let me write my number on, the, on that card. Then, well, I'll give you my number. Hey, I'm just willing to help if you need some help doing it. That's yeah. the purpose of this. Yay! Yay! Yay. Certainly. She needs help. Okay. Yeah. 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 I hope everybody puts their number on the right. um, right. um, right. right. um, right. 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 After we have the card, um, we want to get that
and we look and there's nobody there, but we heard the damn thing fall. And I think it was even, the trap door did fall at one point. So we don't know what that was. Um, so uh, you have to clean up. Remember to clean up, please, please, please. I can't stress that enough. Um, you, we talked about preparing the vehicle, right? I would, if I were you, have more sheet covers than you think you're gonna need because if that cat stinks up the sheet cover, you can just toss that, either throw it or keep it in a plastic bag for, for washing later. And you don't have to deal with that smell. Sometimes they come back from the clinic saying it stunk. You can do that for your car. Just have more. When, this is also part of the aftercare. I, I was a little slow getting into it, but here it is. Um, you choose where the who is going to be doing the, the pre-care and the aftercare. The pre-care obviously is the night or the morning that you, if you do it the night before, it's going to be, have to be in a, a warm place in the winter and a cooler place at night. So that could be your garage, it could be your basement, but it has to be temperature, you have to keep that in mind. Because when the cats are outside and it's cold, they keep themselves warm when moving around. If they're in one spot, they're going to be a little colder. So one of the things you can do is, is put two by fours on the ground. And so say your two by fours are here. And you put the trap this way, across. So this way, they're not only off the ground, and you're going to have something underneath, but if they poo or pee, they won't be sitting in it. It'll drop. Okay. Most of the time, hopefully you will have the grating covered, um, and there are times when it will just sit there, but we won't worry about that. Um, we talked about the trap divider. There's another trick, where is that trap, where you can take your plate. Did you guys talk about the time on? Um, no, and I forgot it's to not going to work switch. most of the time with that because they have so many newspapers in the bottom. Exactly. Yeah, that's it's not when work. that's when you're right, and and that's a big pain in the butt because you want the papers, but how do you get this in? So what you could do if you were really were good with a couple of long sticks was lift up part of the paper and squish this paper plate that's going to have canned food on it through the grating, and then they can eat through the grating. It is really hard when you have newspaper. It really, really is. The second thing, if you have the trap divider, you guys saw the trap divider, you can do that. This is what I would not recommend doing, so please don't do this until you've got a lot of trapping under your belt. One of these. See? Where you're just opening it a little bit and sliding it under. But that's very, you can, you can lose a cap like that. So you got to be really, really careful. And I would prefer you dropping dry food up top, down. Any more questions? Any more points? Did I miss anything? Okay. Um, we know about not petting, right? We know about not touching. We know about all that. We've jumped around a lot. Okay, sanitizing. This is a baby pool, and it really works great. After you release the cat, you want to get rid of the chunks, <laughs> sorry, of anything that's in the trap. You get rid of that, but then you still have to bleach it out. So, <laughs> all right, God bless. Oh Come again? God bless anyway. Um, one part bleach to ten parts water, and you can put it in a baby pool. It's got to be one that a little bit bigger than the tiny ones, and you soak each side for like 10 minutes. You do the best you can. If you can't get the sides, don't worry about it. You've got the bottom, and you can get the top. And uh, let it let it air dry. It's not going to smell like uh, Clorox. It'll be fine. Um, if you're going to spray your vehicle, <laughs> I've had my husband want to spray the vehicle with Febreze while the cats are in there, and I have to like jump on it. No, we don't want to do that. I want to wait till the cats are out. <coughs> so, let's see. We talked about the commanders. We talked about, did I miss anything? 
Yeah. Never leave your trap unattended. Did I say that? Yeah. Okay. That's another. That's another commandment. Yeah. Um. Okay. Here we go. We have. Okay, it wasn't there. There are all kinds of websites: Neighborhood Cats, HSUS, Best Friends, and, and we have. If you go on our website. Um, we have all these great videos, and can you help me? Yeah. Okay. You're, you're so, okay, I'll keep talking. Um, so, you know, that saying about it takes a village to raise a child? Well, it takes a community to do an effective TNR response, and um, I am more than thrilled that all of you showed up today. Those of you who were helping, those of you who have done this before and thought maybe there was another trick you can learn. And